So this evening I am with Brian and Darren, who are finishing up five years, four years four in Australia. Four years. in Australia. Yeah. Um, Canadian ministers who have been out here with the United Church in Australia. First question, um, what's your observation about the difference between the United Church of Christ in Canada and the United Church here in Australia, particularly around LGBTQ issues? Well, the first thing I would say sometimes the only difference is the accent that the person is speaking with. But more often than that, I would say that the big difference between both of those congregations is that the Uniting Church in Australia is bound by rules that have been there for many, many years. And in effect, it's just is afraid to step out into the future in some new and vigorous way. We met, I think, at Daring in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. I don't know if yeah. you remember anything of meeting me there. Yes. yes. I remember a glass of red wine we shared. A common occurrence when we got together. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have been one, I think that was my year anniversary of coming out, I think, that year. What was your recollections of me at that point in time? Of, of, of me? I think you were a person then, as you are now, who was on a journey. You were a lot younger in the journey at that time yep. than you are now. And I believe that you are happier with yourself in what you found out and in the way you are heading. I think you were taking your first steps. And it was, uh, um, like for many of us, it's just uncertain of who you are in this new reality. And so uh, you were trying to find your way of who Jason is yeah. in this new understanding. Does, does the Canadian Church have a daring equivalent? Yes, we have firm, which means yearly. And it's been going now for 32 years, I guess it is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, or even longer, I guess. Oh, yeah. And it, uh, yeah, so they meet regularly. Um, it's made up of gay and lesbian clergy and now also representatives from over 200 affirming congregations. So. so Canada went through the government legislating for same gender marriage many years ago, mm -hmm. and the United Church of Canada made the same decision again many years ago. So in your case, it would have been done and dusted, and yet when you arrived here, you came into it all happening again. How was that for yourself, having to, in a sense, relive that, and what were your observations of people like me and other LGBTQ United Church people going through that process? I think what I wanted to say, and I did say to people at that time, is get over it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's happened. We are still living in Canada with with what happened, and the world did not end because of that. But what we what happened through it is that we came to understand that more so differences didn't matter. It was the faith that carried us forward. Um, I, I get sometimes frustrated with the United Church in Australia because they don't step out. Mm. And I think that was one of the times that they could have stepped out before. Yeah. Mm. And the big difference of here having a plebiscite, which uh, we didn't have. Um, yeah. Our government legislated it. Um, and uh, it, uh, you know, I really felt for Australians because it, it really made it so personal. And, uh, the violent attacks that were in the press and things like that. Um, we didn't have to go through that yeah, in Canada. Yeah. And so it made it um, uh, just uh, for us personally, but when we came to Australia, we were no longer married, we were de facto in the government, eyes of the government. And that meant, uh, you know, suddenly we were running, it was really our lives and our relationship being deb debatable. Yeah. So. Diminished. Yeah. So how was that for you? Sorry? How was that for you coming here knowing that you were not considered married anymore? Uh, 
Well, it's probably, we felt it was something that we could live with because mm -hmm. we knew we were married. Yeah. You know, it didn't matter what the government said to us mm -hmm. because we had been married overseas and we knew that was honored. Yeah. Uh, but it was different walking here in a way that that covenant that we had made and respect, respected somewhere else was vilified here. Mm -hmm. So it gave us an understanding of just what people had been fighting for here. Yeah. Yet we never had to go through that in Canada. Yeah. So we were in this same restaurant about 12 months ago. You're heading back to Canada, unfortunately on Thursday, about four or five days time. Um, we were here because uh, I was a delegate to the National Assembly, um, where we spent six days debating marriage equality and the United Church decided to do that. And I was quite distressed coming out of that. What were your reflections of the United Church process around that assembly and kind of the lead up to it and in a sense the aftermath and where we are now 12 months later? I felt very much that God was present in the deliberations front and centre. That the gay people there who were fighting for equality were more genuine than the people that were fighting on the other side. Um, I felt very much for the people who voted against it that in some way I hope that they would feel that they could be honoured for their understanding and their belief and I believe that was offered to them. But again, I would want to say, it's happened, move on. It's done and dusted. People are dying, people are starving. Let's get to that work before we worry about the city. So both of you have been in parishes um, on the North Source Sydney, which are the more affluent parts of town, perhaps considered the more conservative parts of town, um, but both accepted gay ministers. How's that journey for you been, um, and then sort of 12 months after marriage equality? Well, for my folks, they just couldn't believe that, you know, they figured uh, once the government had passed uh, the motions that of course, we'd be doing weddings right away. And they couldn't believe the church still had processes they had to do. Um, they've been so supportive all along. They just, uh, um, right from the start, they, you know, they couldn't wait for Brian to get here. Brian joined me in Australia later than I did. Um, and uh, they have uh, really, I guess, honored and, and uh, celebrated our partnership. And, uh, just accepted it as uh, like any other partnership. And, uh, so we've been very blessed that way. Mm. Living in the community, you know, people think, well, it's conservative North Shore, but, you know, 72% of the people in my electorate and 75% of the people in Brian's electorate voted for marriage equality, mm. some of the highest in the state. So um, people know, have gay cousins or gay brothers or lesbian sisters conservative socially. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a wonderful saying in Australia and that's a fair go. And, and I believe that people in the North Shore wanted people to have a fair go. Mm -hmm. You know, whether they truly believed in it or not, they voted so that other people might have that within marriage equality. The congregation that I serve, uh, uh, well I served until today, um, were very welcoming to me and they were welcoming to Dan and continued in that way for the two and a half years. But sexuality had nothing to do with what they believed that their mission was. Yes. And their mission was, was to love and to serve others. It's, and basically they, their idea is whoever you are, just come along. Mm -hmm. We don't ask you to be like us. We ask you to share who you are with us so that we might change for the better. Last two questions. Um, so my book is A Journey Towards Acceptance. 
any sort of general observations of what you noticed of my journey over the last four years that we've known, of my journey of the last four years that you've known me? Mm, I think as you've become more aware of who you are, and uh, I think that's allowed you to uh, um, be more comfortable in this new, you know, uh, journey of your life. Um, it takes time to almost like, like a rebirth. You have to discover who Jason is and this and that, or who Darren is, or who Brian is. <coughs> and so you do that by living into this new reality. And as you do that, you become more comfortable with the situation. I think your journey has been one that I've been privileged to be a part of, for the small part that I have. But I think your journey is also giving you the strength to seek more. And that's what I have seen. Mm -hmm. um, and what I see in you, Jason, is a whole new person emerging mm -hmm. from what you were to what you are seeking to become, whatever that might be. Um, mm -hmm. And it has indeed been a privilege. Thank you. Last question for the last ones in this restaurant in Oxford Street. The, the gay capital of Sydney. Um, you've been involved, I think, in at least two of the Sydney Mardi Gras, um, walking or driving a truck up this street. Um, <laughs> we've had dinner in various places here, or drinks in pubs, and I know you've been here lots. What's, what, what is the thing you're going to take back to Canada from Oxford Streets and its surrounds? Mm. The vibrance of the life and the joy that people have of celebrating who they are. They, I believe at the moment anyway, and what I feel when I come here is, is, is the place to come and to be, and to be a part of that life. And it is, um, it is just wonderful. I will miss it when we go, when we return to Canada very much. I think this life, uh, this area is what gives so much support to gay people who have lived the life for a long time and those who are coming out. This is the place that they can come and find the answers to their questions. I'm just taking back the same joie de vivre existing pride at Pride or Mardi Gras. So diverse peoples who come together because because of love. And, um, so it doesn't matter the language or the accent. Um, love is the overarching thing. Mm. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure.